Men seek to return evil for evil, says Aristotle, and if they cannot do so, think their position mere slavery, or good for good, and if they cannot do so, there is no exchange, but it is by exchange that they hold together, unquote. Social cohesion depends on the facility with which the members of a society are able to put themselves in each other's place. But if they imagine themselves as interchangeable parts of a machine, then logically they require a machinist above and beyond themselves to keep the machine in good repair. However, Unless the members participate equally in assuming the duties of the machinist, as well as serving as parts of the machine, the requirement of an overseer contradicts the egalitarian premise of the society, reintroduces hierarchy of priest and sacrificial beast. A state with an ideal constitution, continues Aristotle, cannot have its citizens living the life of mechanics or shopkeepers, which is ignoble and inimical to goodness, nor can it have them engaged in farming. Leisure is a necessity, both for growth and goodness and for the pursuit of political activity. Never mind Aristotle's attempt here to justify the rule of aristocracy. If what he says is true, namely, that leisure is a necessity both for growth in goodness and the pursuit of political activity, then the only way for the citizens of a democracy to acquire the leisure necessary to rule themselves is to free themselves from labor by automating work. But for the members of the labor force to accomplish their replacement by machines, they must one and all equally own the machines. For what boss would willingly surrender his profit in exchange for the free time of his employees? A world whose industry is devoted to producing free time instead of more money is clearly a different world from the one which we currently inhabit. But no more different, really, than a person standing on his feet is different from the same person standing on his head. But now I wish to distinguish between using machines and idolizing them. A human is a creature who, after sufficient research, can imagine putting itself in the place of another creature, and upon the vividness of the imagination depends the vitality of the humanity. But when the attention of the imagination is routinely directed to a mechanical object instead of to a creature, then, according to the vividness of the imaginative identification with the mechanical object, arises the degree of the creature's alienation from itself as a self-conscious creature. Love of machines, high-tech or antique, mechanical or organizational, represents a purely auxiliary mode of consciousness. For however useful or sensitive a machine may be, it cannot become aware of itself. It can never imagine itself being another machine. Therefore, the more a creature identifies with a machine, whether a political party or a computer, whether a football team or a Ford, or in preference to face-to-face -face contact, requires a machine to interface between it and another in order to relate to that other, the less incentive it has to put itself in the place of another creature. I ask a pregnant woman, at what point does the driver distinguish the load from the carriage? She answers, at the very moment the load does. If the poet breaks character, he's flawed. If the philosopher doesn't, he's a fraud. What does that mean? I think it means that the poet succeeds if the poem appears to have been written by one and the same person. But the philosopher succeeds when, in the course of his analysis, he arrives at a deeper level of clarity than he anticipated, and so he must break character in order to continue. 
I'm aware I'm here. But how can I be aware I'm here unless I've objectified my presence, that is, unless I've assumed the point of view of another whom I imagine is elsewhere and therefore present myself to myself as one to another? Briefly, unless I imagine I'm elsewhere and then dismiss this imagined point of view as pure imagination, I cannot even suspect I'm here. Or again, unless I'm in two places at once, one imagined and one real, I cannot say I am in one of them. Am I looking in? If so, I've stepped out. Am I looking out? If so, I might be the very man I'm gazing at. If I'm out, I'm out there with you. If I'm in, please stop by. Bourgeois psychology moves not an inch beyond the individual, partially out of respect for the blank space previously occupied by God that surrounds the individual, insulating his or her soul from others, and partially out of fear, lest requiring others to define itself, the individual soul subsequently conspires with other, others to create, God forbid, the Frankensteinian social individual composed of economically equal bodies. Bourgeois psychology assumes that the individual is in essence independent of and isolated from others. But radical psychology welcomes the socialization of the individual, welcomes our merger with each other into a more sociable individual. How do we affect our merger? This way. If each of us must momentarily imagine we're elsewhere in order to imagine we're, we're here, then it's possible in the course of our imaginary travel to delay our scheduled return to ourselves, where the establishment anxiously awaits us, and loosening up our itinerary, arrange instead to meet each other outside ourselves. And if we enjoy each other's company to the point that we agree to be of one mind, of one revolutionary mind, then, when we return to our respective bodies, we will indeed be of one mind, but with two bodies at its disposal. And the reason we're one is simply because we will it. If we willed otherwise, we'd remain two, smugly duplex instead of snugly simplex. We are the material, and the material shapes itself freely. That is the truth of art and of revolution. Before entering the house of consciousness, an image customarily leaves its gravity at the door. At the moment of death, the soul enters the Colosseum at the same moment that the Colosseum lurches out of sight. Bees of mine, buzzing as I bloom, experience streaming together into consciousness of everything but itself, then consciousness of itself, aware of staring out, a, out of a window of wind. The wind throws open the window, airs itself inside out. You got to I to get by? You got a myth if I? Well, I say fuck I pie. By land and by sea, I'm gonna wee. The species ought to think enough of its members to pay them for being human. When I represent all, I stand tall. When I represent none, I stand clear. When I represent one, I stand near. What is implied by implication? An implicator. What does the implicator stand to gain from implication? Self-discovery. And what to gain from self-discovery? Self-emancipation, that is, emancipation from the self. The word that awoke while it spoke asked what it said. Keep silence, the sentence cried. You're out of line. I shall have a say in what I may the word replied. Who owns the sentence? Under communism, the language. Under capitalism, the punctuation. Youth interprets all in the light of birth, old age in the shadow of death. Pan vert, pan noir, 
one track, Green Black. The Blue of Monday, by adding itself anticipatorily to the Yellow of Sunday, turns Sunday night gangrenous green. And God said, let there be free light half the day, the other half pay. Rose, says Tom, from Eros. Division of labor does not atomize society. Division of labor facilitates automatic performance. Hence, the final goal of division of labor is automation and the liberation of the workforce from mechanical performance. Under capitalism, however, division of labor must stop short of automation for the very reason that the liberation of the workforce from mechanical performance marks the obsolescence of the capitalist machine. For unless the capitalist provides jobs, his employees have no reason to remain loyal to him. So don't blame our isolation from each other on division of labor or specialization. Put the blame rather where it belongs, on the inequitable distribution of wealth. If the salary of the company's chief executive officer is 500 times greater than the file clerk's, then under capitalism, the chief executive officer is worth 500 times more than the file clerk. The disparity of value alienates the two, not the division of labor. As for the file clerks among themselves, who can respect anyone worth 500 times less than their employer? Their mutual disrespect alienates the clerks from each other. So, not division of labor, but inequitable distribution of wealth atomizes society. Dick and Kant don't mind dividing the work, so long as the pleasure, the payoff produced by the work, is equitably distributed. The logical conclusion of division of labor is automation, of inequitable distribution, revolution. The classes of society are owners of productive processes, workers, owner-workers of small businesses, and worker pseudo-owners who participate in non-decision ownership. The owners make decisions. The workers execute the decisions. The owner-workers execute their own decisions. They are the modern version of the independent peasant. The worker owners make pseudo decisions, like choosing Prudential Health Plan or Kaiser, if any plan is offered. That's like voting for X or Y when it's the alphabet you wish to be rid of. On the other hand, the owner decides buy or sell, hire or fire. That's like deciding whether to invade Iraq or Detroit. Historically, the capitalist sets out on his money-making career by acting as both worker and owner, underpaying himself for his labor, cheating himself until he has accumulated enough capital to hire others to cheat. Rand plan. When the workers revolt, send in the cops. When the cops revolt, send in the troops. When the troops revolt, drop the bomb. Better no world at all than a world without class. It is the inalienable right of the victims of thieves to elect a thief of police, to ensure that no one is robbed unfairly and that the thievery is conducted in an orderly fashion. The rich have no bill of sale to establish legal ownership of the economy. That's because it's stolen property. That's why the people don't need to repurchase it. Revolution is simply the return of stolen property to its rightful owner. New week. One day, whose day? Wednesday, where's day? Wise day, latter day, someday. Thou common comrade thief to burglarburg. The word mother 
carries mothers of every shape and size, also fleeting visions of moths, months, Mondays, and moons of every description. But these subversive images are all suppressed by the establishment vision of mother as home womb. The womb from which we emerge a damp vamp, a limp imp, the goon cocoon, the storeroom, self-storage, from which we escape with our lives, the establishment wishes us to regard as ultimately responsible for our plight and not the weir world womb devised by Daedalian man, the artificial womb or world that murders us until we murder it, this maniacal, manical, I'm sorry, this maniacal, mannequin, cannibal mom, mother mayhem, this alienating mother other. The moon revolves around the earth. In 27 days, 7 hours, 43 minutes, 11 and a half seconds. That means that new moon and full moon are spaced about 13 days apart. In fact, the 13th night of the month, the night before the new moon, and hence the darkest night of the month, proved no doubt as we stumbled around in the darkness of the primeval forest to be the unluckiest night of the month. Now, since the moon is traditionally associated with women, I contend that the superstition that the number 13 is unlucky instead of portentous is patriarchal propaganda against women. Thanks for inviting us to your Friday the 13th party. We'd rather coven than covenant any day. True or False Smoking marijuana is to shooting heroin as kisses are to fucking. That is, one naturally leads to another. Answer. False. Smoking marijuana is to shooting heroin as fucking in private is to fucking on stage. One does not necessarily lead to another. Plant pornography. Show your plant how you feel about it by exposing it to dirty pictures. Watch it respond. On marijuana. This joint is jumping. The proletariat hesitates to clear the board of directors, lest it find itself alone in the world, the last mankind alive. Alas, the child never had a parent except the one lying underfoot, except the one stretch, stretching overhead, but not the one out of sight. Its abandonment by that parrot, which encouraged it to feel highly connected even if neglected, was pure fantasy. O oh, little orphan mankind, guided by trustees who slap its wrists whenever it insists. God fucks Lady Luck, then sends her away to console us. Return her to God with this message. Come home, son. We acted hastily. Economy, economan, economoman, hold the economy in common, not in trust. God, an expert creator, evidently no more experienced than its creatures, since creation is only once for both. Moreover, one could argue that the reason that creation is ongoing is that God has yet to get it right. Whether you wish to survive is whether you wish to survive or not is your own business, the owner warns the worker, and inasmuch as the class of owners owns and controls both the means of production and of subsistence, that is, the domain of survival, it's as if the owners monopolize the one part of the mouth which is indispensable to eating, namely the food. And having amassed the oral loot by means of theft by law, the owners cunningly insist, and the workers stupidly concede, that surviving or not is one's own affair, and not everybody's business. The business of the worker is not survival, but revolution. Either you or your boss is scheduled to act from desperation. The loyal employee volunteers. The resolute employee volunteers his or her boss. 
pitter-patter patriarchy. Father waters, mother models. Father moistens the clay, mother bakes it into day. We look alike is the first human family creed. Family worship reaches a critical point in its development, however, when the family asks who or what besides ourselves do we resemble. Labor, fluid property, blood money. Marx argues that no matter how the fortune was made, ultimately it was made as the result of a successful killing in the labor market. The Egyptians believe fire to be a living creature which devours whatever it gets, and when it has eaten enough, dies with the food it feeds on. Herodotus. Capital fuels the fire of profit, a labor of love with labor. Stretching its hands out of the fire of profit, labor pulls capital in out of mutual love. The Philistine is satisfied with the progress made thus far, for the Philistine is an opportunist, and the opportunist is a conservator of the established opportunities which it exploits. Opportunists, opportunists begin by beating flashy wings of innovation, but is, as if on schedule, molt into Philistines, who rest on laurels, track records, on precedent, on laurels and hardy hard work, on laurels and hardy hard heart. Until we turn the situation around, the sad truth is, as Raoul Vanagem puts it, those who don't sell themselves lose their right to survive, and those who do sell themselves lose their right to live. Home is where master lives. To work is where slave is dispatched. It's as if the employer has contracted with the master to rent the slave out on a daily basis. The assumption is that the master awaits at home while the slave is at work. And lo and behold, master and slave always meet at the door. I send myself to work in the morning. After work, I go home. I return to myself. I invite friends over. I play the host with an energy I do not possess. It's illegal to be someone else's slave. When will it be illegal to be one's own slave? Money man, Monday man, Prime time crime, for theft of time from the vaults of Menschlichkeit, I sentence capital to revolution. Lord, next time you test Job, never mind liquidating his estate, just find him a job, then stuff your ears for fright at his profanation. The Tao of Capitalism, the Psychopath Workday dawn, the one sore spot on the horizon tumors malignantly into day. Under capitalism, the biographies of people read like classified ads. For sale, buy me, I'm fancy, I'm cheap, I'm dandy, I'm deep, meet Andy and weep. No one but me, why continue? Unique freak desperate to commune? Fuck it. Let's see if annihilating capitalism doesn't improve my luck. Owners versus aloners. The banding together of the owners is called the state. Of the aloners, revolution. Braggots and wimps, blimps and wimps, inflated and deflated. Wimp from whimper to make a low whining plaintive or broken sound. In an attempt to invoke the pity of the assailant, the child whimpered. Imp power. In the imp lies the potential of the wimp. The whims of the wimps needs must, get, must gather into a will, the will to limp the blimp, to rag the braggart. Old English, impa, impion. An imp is an implantation, a graft, a shoot. I was the Coventry gardener for to graph imps. P. 
Piers Plowman. Me too, Pete. We shall very well. Time to talk turtle. I know it's hard to confront the mob we respectfully call the establishment, but we don't have to marry the maniac, just disarm it. If I rob a bank, I'm a criminal, but if my gang were large enough to rob every bank in the world, we would not be criminals. On the contrary, we would have successfully executed a corporate takeover. Revolution continually reminds that the form society takes, however advantageous to some, disadvantageous to others, is never final, and the ferocity of the revolution is in proportion to the resistance to change of the status quo. Go collective. Own your own society. The burghers await the future with the same dismal confidence that they expedite the past, as if the future were freshly killed and remained only to be processed, packaged, and brought to market. The higher the rank, the less interest in falling. That's why we have to shake the rich like apples out of the tree of wealth. But this time we won't climb the trees, because some of us always refuse to come down. This time we'll shake the orchard. Surviving is, li surviving is to living as fresh fish is to live lobster. Let us be neither upwardly nor downwardly mobile, but inwardly mobile like a wave that gathers, outwardly mobile, like a wave that breaks. All who own their bodies, pool them into one proprietor, and if anyone declares pooling illegal and dams you up, flood them with love, with blood, with light, but flood and flow on. Tsunami the sea stood on end, it darkened the sky, and broke and flooded and washed away own down. Tsunami, water rules the roost. Long before the tsunami, high as the Hollywood hills, crossed Venice and La Brea against the light, when it was still a ripple unsure of itself, I fed it fish, stroked it, turned it around, spoke of the wave that rolled over the world from which we all subside, sloshing in barrels, instead of a sea standing on end. Workers are to owners as darkness to light. Light is incapable of admitting how valuable a resource is darkness. The darkness must enlighten itself. Light without dark light without sight, dark without light, night without end. Oh, the violence the sunrise does on the dead duck dark. Imagine making instead of merely meeting the day, of spending the night with day, of leaving the house with day, instead of trespassing across it, prosecuted by its owners. The calendar licenses the day. Rip the day from the wall. Stroll through lawless light. Deconstruct career. Serve subversion. Don't drop out. Wherever you are, conspire to undermine. Get paid for secretly helping to neutralize the owners of a situation which sacrifices instead of enlightens humanity. Don't waste time on friends. Friendship's Victorian. Friends have status in common. Like youth, they enter together the world of establishment to exploit, not to change it. Rather, conspire with subversives to pull the rug out from under the floor plan. The word comrade from the Middle French camarade originally meant people who sleep in the same room from the Latin camera, chamber, that is, roommates. By extension, people who share the same world view sleep under one sky. They also are comrades. 
comrades, you don't have to sleep together to fight together. But if you do, anarchy is proud to include your genitals among freedom's weaponry. Don't be intimidated by the office building. Dissolve property into situation, situation into relationship, relationship into aspirant and conspirator, into upwardly mobile and upwardly immovable. When personnel masquerading as persons discharge their stress guns at you, secretly return fire by stealing their papers, breaking their machines, drive them insane. Let their consternation motivate the fine work that you do. Let their suspicions bring excitement to the job. Whoever Othello's Iago. By gradually restructuring hierarchic into anarchic relationships, you subvert the situation. By subverting the situation, you annul the life of the property. You fell the building. People, say no with your power to kill, to take. Say yes with your power to work, to make. Power to the people. Junk capitalism. Let the ambitious wish they were dead instead of the desperate. Karl Marx saw the sparks. We will see the fire. Bad moon on the rise. Higher, higher. The empire status quo sucks blood of those below. Bad moon on the rise. Higher, higher. Work lords of the earth, own the rights of birth. Rent a baby boy, rent a baby toy. Kiss in poisoned air, no wonder we despair. Pull each other's hair instead of kicking down the poisoner to the ground. Police are running scared, call up the reserves. People in the streets full of desire, desire. Karl Marx saw the sparks, we will see the fire. Bad moon on the rise, higher, higher. Dialogue, labor, but I only live once, capital. I'm sure you do, but you didn't have to be a victim. You could have victimized. Labor pro bono is the charitable donation of labor, free work, of one generation which knows the score on behalf of another generation which deserves a fairer shake. Remaking society is work. Revolution pro bono work. By wanting time to pass quickly so you can do something more fun, for a brief period, you want your life to pass quickly. For a brief period, you are willing to shorten your lifespan in order to hasten the end of boredom. You are willing to die sooner in order to live more. When, in order to live more, you are willing to bring the remote hour of death within arm's reach, you are revolutionized. Your teacher, your boss, your president, your husband, your wife, your child, your friend will insist that you give up the ghost long before the house is vacant. Refuse. Yes, they can demolish you. But so long as you do not vacate the premises, they can't turn you into a workhouse. The stressence of stress. Here's how to handle stress. If someone burns you, return the fire. If an idea burns you, think back. How do you take a ball away from a child with a gun? If the ball is the earth, the child the owner, and the gun, an antiquated economic system passed down from father to son like a family heirloom. Answer. You offer the child a vision of a new and better ball. If it rejects the vision, you kill it. Revolution. Who'll tell us where? The rooster? The hen? Who'll tell us... I'm sorry. Revolution. Who'll tell us when? The rooster? The hen? Who'll tell us where? The camel? The hare? Who'll, who'll tell us how? The bishop? The cow? We'll pile up a surplus and spend till we know. Harming is rapid. Helping 
is slow. Oh, hear the crickets winding the clocks of light for tomorrow's dawn. Workers like to make things work. Workers, the world needs work. Isn't it time to collect and punch in? When the slave understood it was a person, slavery ended. When the person understood it had a future, capitalism ended. Every revolution, every revolution is them against us, except the last. The last revolution is just us, with them in the way. Because the word folk is cognate with the word work, and because revolution invites the reworking of the world by the folk for the folk, I say that making revolution, as much as quilting, is folk art. I name the revolution Suzy Tsunami. Suzer and Sue, gather your people. Revolution launches us as a kind, not just a sample. Only because capitalism loots the community must we become communists. Must we plow back the profit pocketed by the capitalist into the business of living together. Capitalism is primitive. It favors living apart because thieves dislike socializing with their victims. But we're falling apart without each other. Once we combine in order to control in common the funds we produce in common, then like slave problems, money problems will be a thing of the past. There is enough to go around once and twice and three times and four enough to go around from door to door. I'm very uneasy about ecology. By focusing exclusively on the natural environment, these muckrakers of the earth implicitly abandon a mankind fallen under the hooves of the stampeding cattle of capitalism as if it were not the problem of ecologists to meddle in the affairs of the species of which they themselves are members. Moreover, lurking beneath their preservation activities is the unproven and cynical foregone conclusion that there is not enough nature left to produce abundance for all. To the extent that ecologists would have us dismiss the idea of future abundance as unecological, they participate, whether willingly or stupidly, in capital scarcity scam. Certainly, save the whale, that symbol of freedom, but save it for whom? For the wage slaves of capital? Or for junketing scientists in the pay of Leviathan? I earn $12,000 a year. The president of my company earns $600,000 a year. He earns 500 times more than I do. Or, as they say, he is worth 500 times more than me. 500 times. I live in the basement. He lives on the 500th floor of the same building. He deserves 500 times more respect, more recognition, more comfort, more love than I. Well, not for one minute do I believe that. That's why my neighbors and I have set the building on fire. Watching the flames climb from the first to the 500th floor, the very equality of destruction we find irresistible. At the beginning of the deconditioning process, it doesn't matter the good or bad one does. All that matters is that one not deceive oneself in whose favor the dice of modern enterprise are loaded. If one's heart is essentially with one's fellows, negative opportunism, I mean subversion, will gradually assume the leading role in one's actions against the reckless robots of renown. Commonwealth is the container, says Marx, that community requires, the womb it needs to be born out of. Until then, we can't commune, only commodify. Feel your way, think your way, make your way to revolution. The next time you go out, imagine that everyone earns the same salary. 
Do you feel better or worse? If you feel better, then you live under the disadvantage of being poor, and consequently you are potentially revolutionary. If you feel worse, you enjoy the advantage of wealth, and so you are counter-revolutionary. If you feel the same, go home and sleep it off. Each connected by a short or long fuse or defuse to the revolution. During a war, we kill routinely on command. During a revolution, we put our heart into it. Collect, yes, but where? In the street? Wherever minds meet, shortly will follow feet. There is no revolution without a destruction of bourgeois society and of wage labor as a producer of value and of and of money as an instrument of the circulation of value and command. Antonio Negri, Marx Beyond Marx. I've turned a corner. I fear betraying breath more than I fear death. Welcome to Demo World. During the recent cold spell in Asia, Friends of Mongolia sent a power plant and a hundred thousand electric blankets to help make the coldsters cozy. The citizens of Ecuador have volunteered to fund the power plant by working an extra hour on Tuesday. We're one of a kind, two of a kind, three of a kind, four of a kind. We're four billion of one kind, of two kinds of three kinds, of four kinds, where four billion of four billion kinds.